Hey, hey everyone, and a welcome in. It's a monkey mar. Before we get into today's uh, video, please make sure you click that subscribe button, the bell for uh, notifications, and of course, the like. Let's get into a Monday updates. I'm going to go ahead and check and see what updates are out, and you guys can join me. And with that, let's get into it. of this video I am also going to touch on a few comments that were left and with that let's get into the first update and this one really bothered me because after seeing the pictures of the car which you're going to see uh, where is Erica Lloyd so 29 Palms towing company gives a first look at Erica Lloyd's mysteriously damaged car Search efforts continue for missing Walnut Creek woman Erica Ashley Lloyd, last seen leaving the Walnut Creek area on Sunday, June 14th for a road trip to Joshua Tree National Park. If you have not seen my video on Joshua Tree and explains about her car and where it was, please make sure you check it out because then you will understand why this is really bothersome. Doug Billings, now he's the one the parents hired the cave mine expert, hasn't stopped searching. We are looking for Erica, but we are looking to figure out what's been searched, said Billings. Billings continues to comb through the desert as he tracks his every move. I like to keep data of what I am doing, so I'll mark stuff and assign a number, said Billings. He checked every questionable crevice in sight. Billings has volunteered his expertise in the disappearance of Erica Lloyd. Lloyd was traveling to Joshua Tree National Park for a camping trip. When her family say they lost contact with her on June 16th, the same day California Highway Patrol found Lloyd's car abandoned near Highway 62 near 29 Palms. It's more than just vandalized, said Diane Bailey, the owner of Bailey's Auto Repair and Towing. The owners of the towing company gave us the first look at her mysteriously damaged car. The car has smashed windows, shattered radio, and the airbag was deployed. The radiator is extremely smashed backwards, said David Bailey. The whole bottom of the radiator, the AC condenser is all pushed back very is all pushed back hit a very large object and tucked away in the trunk a folded stroller placed in a laundry basket it's actually placed on the basket but you will see we were dispatched from the highway patrol to go tow a vehicle near Shelton Road and Highway 62, said Bailey. The front of the car was facing as if you were going to 29 Palms Highway or pointed south. The San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department have told us no foul play here. I mean, how is there no foul play? Where is Erica Lloyd, the woman who was driving that car to go camping in your area? And there are indications she drove her car out of the park. Now, they do have surveillance camera with her leaving the park. So, did something happen when she left the park and she hit something? And you guys look at the damage on this car and tell me what you think when you see it. And, of course, leave your comments. Plus, they found her camping gear at a campsite. Ooh! in Jumbo Rocks Campground. Okay, let me pause for a second because this is new. 
Okay, I had to gather my thoughts for a second, and I'm going to have to go look into this after I finish reading this article. But if we remember, they said that they had found no camping gear in the car or near the car. But this was when the car was inside the park. The night before it was found on the side of the road, they ticketed it in the park and I thought it had damage. So how did it get out of the park? Then there was video camera that supposedly saw the car leaving. So maybe they do see her driving the car on the video camera. She hit the berm of the road when they grade the berm of the road, a big tall part of the dirt, said Bailey. People typically hit that. If she hit that, she hit it straight on perfectly in the middle. Despite the puzzling circumstances, the Baileys urge people not to give up. Everybody keep looking for her. We'll find her, and hopefully when we find her, she's alive and well, said Bailey. If you have any information on Lloyd's whereabouts, please contact the Marengo Basins Sheriff's Department at 760-366-4175. Let me go find an article about her camp stuff that was found. And you guys enjoy these horrible images of Erica Lloyd's car. Well, actually, it's a little video. I went back and checked a few articles and I have alerts on her and I know for a fact if I heard they found camping equipment I would have remembered and I can't find it. But this part of the article let me touch on. Miss Lloyd's vehicle did have broken windshield and rear windshield as well. We don't know the clothing Miss Lloyd was last wearing or when she was last seen. We can look for clues like broken glass and jewelry that you might find out there, said Lewis. According to park rangers who were patrolling the Jumbo Rocks campground on Tuesday, spotted a vandalized black Honda Accord parked near number 47 and 48 campsite. But the ranger said the security footage shows the vehicle leaving the park Tuesday night. After about four hours of searching, crew members gathered back up to share information on what they saw. Park Ranger Nathan Lewis confirmed with News Channel 3 that his team found footprints in the Jumbo Rocks campground on Wednesday, June 24th. I thank everybody that has been helping us while we have been out here, said Lloyd. And that's Erica Lloyd's father who said that. I don't know, it's like they said the car car was vandalized, then the car was not vandalized, and she was in the campground, and there was no camping gear, and now it's just popped out that there was camping gear set up, and she was in Jumbo Rock's campground. And if she was parked near campsite 47 and 48, then maybe that's where the stuff was set up. I showed pictures of the campsite and like I said before, I will link above that video. So if you want to, you can check it out. All right, so I went to do a quick check-in on Briasia Terrell to see if anything was new. And even though they say this was not related to Briasia Terrell, this is how many nut jobs are in the world. So. Reporter T.M. Bozer on Twitter is on the scene of heavy police presence in Cole Valley. She saw about 10 kids leaving one of the trailers. We are still waiting for more details. So let's look at the pictures. So this is in the area where Briasia Terrell went missing. But it says, which I did read another article, this has nothing to do with the Briasia Terrell case. But I'm going to follow it. 
I don't know why somebody would have 10 children in their house unless it's their grandchildren and nieces and nephews. Very strange. Okay, we have a little update on Suzanne Morphew. Well, her family, her brother especially, is starting to get antsy and he wants answers. I don't blame him. So, out of KDVR in Denver, family members of Suzanne Morphew say they are not giving up in their search to find the missing mother of two. Few clues have surfaced since her disappearance, creating a mystery as to what happened to the Chaffee County woman Morphew, a mother of two, vanished nearly four months ago. She could light up a room with her smile, said Morphew's older brother, Andrew Mormon. Just a beautiful human being. And he's been out on YouTube speaking to profiling evil, I believe. And he's had enough. He wants to know where his sister is. The 49-year-old reportedly left her home to enjoy a bike ride. She never returned. Authorities said a neighbor reported her missing on Mother's Day of 2020. He says that Susan would never leave her home or her daughters. There's just no way. He also suspects foul play. He spoke to Fox 31's Indianapolis affiliate during the vigil for Morphew on Saturday in Alexandria, Indiana. He used the event to drum up support to find her. The investigators have asked us to stay reasonably quiet, and we have, he said, but I'm past that point now. And I don't blame you. It's time to get this out in the media and get some volunteers together and march on Salida, Colorado and find my little sister. Mormon has already been to Salida area. He said he arrived the day after his sister was reported missing. I woke up that morning. I looked out the window of the place I was staying and I just cried because the mountains are so big. And it was like looking for a needle in a haystack, Mormon said. His plan is to enlist as many volunteers as possible and set out from Indiana on September 23rd. Mormon said he wishes Suzanne's husband, Barry, would be more helpful. Hmm. We do know how a few of us feel about good old Barry Morphew. I don't feel like he's fully cooperated with the investigators. I don't either, Mormon said. He should have taken a lie detector and a voice analysis and anything else they ask him to do. You are correct. He's gone kind of quiet. Yeah, be wary of the quiet ones. Those willing to volunteer should contact a crime-solving organization called Profiling Evil, according to Mormon. So I am going to drop their link in the description yeah, I love those guys. And that's what's new on Suzanne Morphew. Well, those are the only new updates I have in the cases that I'm following. Somebody mentioned in a comment underneath Crazies in Colorado that the bones that were found at the disc a golf course in Douglas County, Colorado, were that of a man in his 80s, and something about a cemetery that used to be there and in Pueblo. So I am going to look into that. I don't know how much it's true until I see it or read it myself, but with that, guys, it is a wrap. I want to thank you all for coming in. Thank you for watching. Please like or dislike, whichever you prefer, and uh, subscribe. Everyone stay safe from COVID and stay vigilant. And have a good day or a good night wherever you are in the world. And I am out.